A mysterious thing happened today. A parrot from the west flew down carrying a message from Caesar. It's no owl, but it's kind of fun having him on my shoulder. Do you know what this is about? Caesar is generally a prolific writer in Latin. That's what we read about. Let's see what he has to say. Hey guys, I had a lot of fun building with you the other day. Guess what? I left a surprise for you behind the painting. Go check it out, Caesar. P.S. My parrot's name is Brutus and he likes smoothies. When Caesar was here, I was so busy building I didn't even notice. But he jumped right out of the painting, right in front of my face. Let's go see. Wow, a whole new room. This would be perfect for an enchanting room. Moving on to third conjugation verbs. These are a little bit tricky because their, their principal parts are all irregular. Now there are some similarities within the different irregularities. Sounds a little confusing, but you'll get what I mean in a second. But thankfully some of them are not too hard to memorize. First of all, remember all of them are going to have an O at the end of the first principal part. And all of them are going to have this ERE -E without a macron on the first E. So at least you know that. And then of course, all of them are going to have this I here that's necessary to create that perfect tense. And then all of them are gonna have that US. So you're at least gonna see those parts, but the stems before that are gonna be a little bit weird. So looking at this one, duco, ducere, duxi, ductus. Now this one's kind of cool because it's related to a noun that you've already memorized. Do you remember dux, duchis? What did that word mean? That meant leader. So what would a leader do but lead or guide? This is just like the verb form of that noun that you've memorized. Then we have gero, gerere, gesi, gestus. Notice it has that O, E, R, E, I, U, S there. This word means carry or carry on. Have carry on as in continue or wage whenever it's used with bellum, which means war, remember. So wage war. Then we have defendo, defendere, defendi, defensus. This is one of the easiest words in this vocabulary list because the word is right there in the stem. It is the stem. Defend. Wonder where we got that word. Well, there you go. Tell your friends. Then we have instruo, instruere, instruxi, instructus. Now, here's the cool thing about some of these words. Even though they're, they have irregular principal parts, some of them are very similar to each other. Like notice, instruo looks very similar to this one because it has that X there and the, the CT, UCT actually. See, the uxi and the uctus are on both of these. So sometimes you can see similarities in the irregularities. That's what I've been trying to say here, even though that sounds kind of confusing. Anyway, if you think of instruct, then you might remember draw up or equip. This is usually used in a military context. So we have mito, mitere, missi, missus. This word, if you think of like a message or maybe even a missile, a missile is sent somewhere. This word means send. Then we have fortiter. This word, I kind of like to look at the word fort inside of the word and think of people on the fort. And whenever they're on the fort, they will fight bravely or strongly. You have to if you're guarding the fort. Then we have winko, winkere, wiki, wikitus. If you are victorious or victorious in a battle, that means you have conquered. Conquer the battle, winko. Then we have peto, petere, petui, petitus. Now, if you happen to have a pet dog, then you will know what this word means, especially if you're sitting at the dinner table and there's a, heap, a pile of really good looking food. Peto means beg or seek a request. The dog generally wants that. Pelo, pelere, pepuli, bolsos. You can kind of see this in the word if you add a little re on there. Repel it means drive, repulse, route. Drive back. Then we have literae, literarum. This one you can see in the stem. It means letter or dispatch. Dispatch is just a fancy word for letter. Then we have pono. 
ponere posui posetus. This word means put, place, set, or pitch when it is used with castra. So don't don't translate it as pitch unless castra is in the sentence and being used with it. Then we have contendo, contendere, contendi, and then there's no fourth principal part. So a <laughs> little bit disappointing again there, but that's okay. This word means contend or strive or hasten. You can see that in the principal parts, contend. Then we have ago, agere, egi, actus. I like to look at this fourth principal part in this one just because act is one of the translations of this word. Now this one's tricky just because it has four different translations given and you'll have to watch out for all four of them. It means drive, do, act, or treat. Now it's a little tricky because there's first of all there's four of them and second of all they don't seem to relate very much. So act and do, you can kind of see that. So if you see the act in the fourth principal part, you'll say, oh yeah, it means act, or it means do. Drive, you know what drive means. It's like driving people away. It's not like driving a car. That's not what this means. There weren't any cars in this time. And then treat. This isn't treat as in candy. This is treat as in talk with another person. It took me a little while to figure that one out, but it means treat. So that's, that's, it's like having a conversation with a, someone. And then we have Ibi. This one's kind of fun because it's like the answer to our question that we had in lesson 11. We had Ubi, which meant where. Ibi is going to mean there. So you ask Ubi, where? Well, Ibi, there. Ubi, Ibi, where, there. <laughs> it's kind of fun to say. Then we have De. This one's a preposition. It's nice and small, but it's another one of those that's really small and has a really big meaning. Today means concerning or about. And you have to say it in a really cool British accent if you do the translation. Concer I'm not saying it right. Concerning or about. Goes with ablative. Memorize that part. It's important for prepositions. Sis wants the upstairs bedroom. It's super pretty and perfect for her. But all I need are some books, a couch, Maybe some paintings and I'm good to go. I've always wanted to sleep under the stairs like Harry Potter. Let's see if we can go through and say what these mean. Duco, ducere, duxi, ductus. Lead or guide. Oops. Here's our next one. Gero, gerere, gessi, gestus. Carry. Carry on. Wage. With bellum. Defendo, defendere. Defense, defendi, defensus. Defend. Instro, instruere, instruxi, instructus. Remember, it doesn't mean instruct, but it means draw up or equip, which is basically instructing. But just put these so that you'll know that it's matching the answer key. Mito, mitere, missi, missus. Send. Have for to tear. Remember, this one is an adverb, means bravely, strongly. Winko, winkere, wiki, wictus. Conquer. Peto, petere, petui, petitus. Remember, this one means seek, beg, or request. Then we have pelo, pelere, pepuli, pulsus, which means drive, repulse, or route. Try to memorize all of the meanings, not just one of them, even if it comes up more often than the others. Literai, literarum, means letter, dispatch. Pono, ponere, posui, positus. Put, place, set, or pitch whenever it's used with castra. Contendo, contendere, contendi, no fourth principal part. This word means contend, or strive, or hasten. Now this one's a little bit tricky, do your best to memorize this one, but just because it's another one of those that, where contend isn't, doesn't really sound like hasten, because contending is like fighting, basically. Or, yeah, 
and then striving is almost like fighting but not quite if you strive to do something you're working hard at it and then hasten is like moving quickly to do something so they're all a little bit different but if you can remember contend first then you may just have to connect strive and hasten with contend there but you'll catch on the more you use it then ago agere egi actus drive do act treat ibi Remember, this is the answer to our question. It means there. And then finally, day, which means concerning or about. And it's with ablative. So there we go, that's lesson 12 vocabulary. Do your best to memorize it. I know some of the principal parts are hard, but maybe copy them out. Do your best to memorize those principal parts as well. And just do your best to work hard at this lesson. Good luck. Great work, everyone. Our house is all set up. I'm thinking about doing some work in the yard next time. See you then.